Now, if you're like me and you're obsessed with the way film looks, then this is the video to watch because I'm going to show you two different ways of getting that retro film look with your digital camera, along with a few things you need to do before you press record to make sure you get the most authentic results. about the way that film looks that makes it so much more pleasing than digital and for me it comes down to five main things the image softness the grain the highlights the colors and the contrast so everything we look at within this video is going to point back to those five things and I'm going to demonstrate this by creating one cinematic Hollywood film style look and another that looks like it was filmed on an old handy cam like a 90s home video or something like that because those two styles are my absolute favorite so let's look at the Handycam style first, but before we start the edit, I want to show you just a few things that you can do first in camera before you start filming that will make it look even more authentic. Now you don't have to do this first one, could be a little bit controversial, but I recommend switching off the image stabilization. What that's going to do is it's going to give you that authentic handheld Handycam look because cameras back then didn't used to have image stabilization built into them and all your camera movements are going to look terrible, but trust me, it's a good thing. Now you wouldn't usually zoom in in the middle of a take unless you were filming a Mexican standoff or a hot fuzz type fast sequence but in this instance it's all right to keep those zoom ins in <laughs> and I think the clunkier the better and if you've got a digital zoom feel free to use that as well turn the sharpening down in camera because you don't want an overly sharp image like a photography camera you want it nice and soft don't worry if you can't do that in camera because you can do it in post and I'm going to show you how to do that in a bit now to help with a little bit of softness you can use a mist filter my advice is don't go too strong because it doesn't just soften your image it gives you those bloomy highlights which is very nice but sometimes it can be too strong and I don't like too much I'll leave a link in the description for the ones I use because they're nice and subtle Danny boy's not all right look he's uh, he thought he was gonna have more fun than he is and it's the camera's fault because I'm with you <laughs> When it comes to focusing, you could use a center point focus so it just focuses on what's in the center of the frame or you could use manual focus. And the thing is, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect because again, we're going for that homemade amateur style look. Now when I'm filming in this style, I'm not thinking too much about the framing and the composition because again, I don't want it to be professional. Just know that you don't have to be perfect with the movements and it's okay to reframe and move around a little bit and you don't have to be perfectly level either. Old cameras don't have the best dynamic range so it's okay if it's a little bit dark at times. Now I do have a full video all about how to set your exposure and you can watch that one up here after this video. But in this case, I recommend exposing so that the sky has plenty of detail in it and it's not too bright and overexposed. And you wanna keep your aperture at least f5.6 or higher because we don't want too much depth of field and blurry background because that's way too nice and cinematic. In fact, I filmed most of that sequence at f8. And lastly, if your camera has this, set Set your aspect ratio to 4x3 for that 80s TV look. Now I'm using the Lumix S5 2X, but if your camera doesn't have this, you can just crop away the edges of your 16x9 frame or set up a new project in 4x3 and then just resize the image to fit that. Right, now we're going to move on to the edit and I'm actually going to use a plugin for this. If you don't know, Film Convert is a film emulation plugin that contains actual film stock profiles that have been modeled on real film stock and it works with just about any camera and the results are amazing. I've used it for a long time. It's so authentic and customizable. There's a link in the description for a free trial and 10% off if you go for the full download version. So make sure you don't miss out on that. So I've added film convert to my footage and all you have to do next is select the camera and the profile that you use to film with. And then here comes the fun part because there's all of these film stocks that we can choose from based on actual film. So if you've got a favorite film 
film look that you like, you select that and it's going to look just like it. They've even got a lot of black and white profiles that you can pick from as well, but I'm going to do a dedicated video all about black and white, how to set the camera up and how to expose properly for it, as well as getting a really good look using Film Convert. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss that one. So if you wanted to, you could just choose one of these profiles and leave it as it is, or you can go in and customize it even further, which I'm going to show you how to do. Now these look just like the film stocks that they're based on, but I recommend going through these, having a look at them all, seeing which one's your favorite and what fits best with the kind of style that you're going for and the footage that you've filmed. Then you can just go in and tweak little bits when you need to, and you can dial in the film color and the intensity of that look. Get it to where it looks good to you. So the one I've gone for in this instance is the FJ Pro V 100, which is based on the Fuji Chrome Pro V 100F. Okay, so when we get to the grain size, because I'm looking for like a an old camcorder type thing, I'm gonna add a lot of grain, and I'm also gonna bump up the image softness. I'm gonna make it nice and soft. I don't want it to be sharp and detailed because those cameras weren't sharp and detailed, and that's what I love about that image. Now, what's very special about Film Convert is when it comes to grain, it's not just a grain overlay that you put on your footage it's much deeper than that in film grain actually is embedded in that film and it reacts in a certain way and looks different depending on the contrast the film stock itself and loads of other things and what film convert have done is they've made it so you can customize this grain however you like you can even change the amount of grain for the shadows the midtones or the highlights separately and that's awesome i usually set the grain saturation really low but because this is kind of a video type look it's probably going to suit it best to have a bit of of color in that noise. If you're not quite sure on this, you can select a preset based on the film size. Okay, so the other thing I'm gonna do here is change the contrast slightly. So for me, because I filmed it on a camera with really good dynamic range, there's too much detail. It looks too good still. So I'm just gonna go into the curves within Film Convert and pull the shadows down a little bit just to lose some of that detail in the shadows. I know this is counterintuitive because these are all the things we wanna keep usually, but in this instance, this is what I'm gonna do. Yes. I'm just gonna quickly show you one more example that looks like it was filmed on film rather than the digital camera. Now I've got some footage here that was filmed on my S5 Mark II X along with my Shure 850mm anamorphic lens. Now if you haven't seen that video, I definitely recommend going to watch it because it's one of my favorite lenses so far. And I also show you a little bit of my color grading process. So with this example, I'm not going too heavy on the grain. I usually add a little bit more grain because when you're viewing it back on small devices like a phone, it's it's hard to see that grain and I really like the more the better for me but I have to hold back sometimes and if you look at this example from an actual film filmed on film you don't really notice it until you're looking for it but all the grain is really doing is adding a little bit of softness to the image and you can still see the detail that the lens and the camera is giving you so it's a balancing act I like a soft image so I'm gonna add a little bit more grain and there's no rules here you can do it however you want but if you really want to get close to film add a little bit but don't lose all your sharpness there's there's minimal color grading involved and it does a really good job with the skin tones and the greens it really does give you that film like quality if the color isn't quite right you can actually go into the color wheels section and adjust the colors for the shadows the midtones and the highlights as well as the temperature and tint controls and I think these functions and these tools are so much better than the ones that are built in to your editor now I know what the DaVinci guys are gonna say they're gonna say shift to DaVinci it's amazing whatever Right? <laughs> I just like doing things within Final Cut Pro. It works for me. With this as an add-on, it's even better. It's really good. It is very good. I feel like as well, it controls the highlight roll off. And that was one of the things that I mentioned earlier, how film handles the highlights. And with this, it's kind of got a really clever contrast curve and you can go in and change that. But it looks like no matter where your highlights are, it just gradually rolls them off. So it's nice and soft. It's not too bright all of a sudden. And that is what gives it that real authentic film look. Another awesome feature of Film Convert is that it allows you to export a LUT straight from within your editor. So once you've dialed in your preset that you really like, just export that to a LUT. Then you can put that into your camera or your monitor and you can see what your exposure, your contrast and your colors are gonna look like whilst you're filming. The 
The only thing to bear in mind is you don't get the grain built into those LUTs. Now I'd love to know what results you're getting with this program as well because I think it's amazing. I've got some really good results with it. So if you make something using Film Convert, upload your videos to Instagram and tag me and Film Convert in that as well so we can see it and share it because I'm really interested to see what you do. As I mentioned earlier, one of the biggest things to get right is what I talk about in this video. So I highly recommend watching that one next. If you want more control and the best results that you can get, no matter what style you like to film. Thank you.